being a walk-on from South Dakota originally, and there's Lisa Bluter, who has just built this thing in Iowa to the cusp of a national championship, and here is Caitlin Clark. You know what? Why not give the fans what they want, and it's an opening missed three, but an offensive rebound. Yeah, Nebraska got lucky there, just complete miscommunication on who was guarding the nation's leading score. That is not exactly what Amy Williams wanted off the jump. Yeah, she said they actually, her and her staff, spent four hours after their last game breaking down the film of Caitlin Clark. Jazz Shelley with the miss. You have to have an awareness to try to make things as difficult as you can. But Coach Williams also mentioned other players limiting them. She said Sydney Falter, a player who came in and hurt us last game. Kate Martin is so good off the ball there on the drive with the opening two. Yeah, Kate Martin has been playing so well as of late, coming off of back-to-back double-doubles, and you just see the size getting into the lane on the left side. For Nebraska, you don't see Darian White in the starting lineup. She was dealing with a leg injury, was out for the last game. She did practice yesterday as Markowski gets her first bucket to open the scoring for Nebraska. Yeah, there's that matchup we're going to be looking at. Alexis Markowski going to be very physical at 6'3", uses that turnaround to create some space. How do you think Nebraska will deal with Caitlin Clark today? Well, I think they're going to give her different looks. That's not the look that they wanted there. Caitlin Clark with her first three. 36 away. We'll be keeping track of how close she is to the scoring record in the NCAA today. Finally pots from the baseline for Nebraska. Nice drive and kick out from Kendall Moriarty setting that up. Getting into the paint and reverse pivoting to find a talented freshman. Clark to the bucket. Two and a foul. Her ability to draw and maintain that contact. And Nebraska willing to shrink this game so far. They're bleeding down the shot clock. And we have a whistle away from the ball and a foul. Markowski, I think they play so well through her, even if she's not taking the initial shot. But we have not seen an intent to get it into her in the post and play out of that yet. Maybe on the first time out, we see that intent. Clark to Stolke for two. There it is, into the post, Markowski turning and missing. Open floor, here comes 22, stalking her prey. A wrap around for Stolke, who's fouled. She plays most of the minutes of the game, so I assume even if she's on the bench, the cam follows her? I think so. I heard you are a big TikToker. I know, oh, yeah, so I know you'll be all over that. Yeah, I'm not one of the olds anymore. <laughs> Certainly, free throw is good. Allison, what do you She have? also said offensively they need to be more intentional setting their screens. She said they're just running through our screens right now. I love Coach Bluter though. She said, guys, you're getting good shots. They're just a little high. Calm down, take a breath, and she wrapped it up with a smile and said, hey Hawks, this is our house. Ooh, how about that? Oh my. They have fun, yeah. They can talk a little too. Bounce pass from Clark and a beautiful thread through. Alexis Markowski has two fouls. She's on the bench. That's a big loss for Nebraska. Yeah, Markowski, obviously their leading scorer and rebounder was huge in the first meeting. But how about Jessica Petrie sliding right into that center spot? A great find from Jazz Shelley there. It's interesting to see her approach because we mentioned the 15 assists. Nice feed into Addie and Brady. But at, at the last home game, 15 assists. But I think sometimes she gets more fired up in these road environments. And we saw her active in her first couple of shot attempts. Down deep, they get a good look that won't go for Coley. Offensive rebound. And they'll reset. That's Shelly. And that's big. O'Grady, turn around. It rolled out. Hard drive from Haig on the drop off mid lane and Markowski, who they need even with two fouls in the game. Yeah, Coach Amy Williams feeling the need to put her back in. Callan Haig, nice job of pushing pace in transition to find her center. White trying to heat up Caitlin Clark and she takes that personally. Two more, seven for Caitlin Clark in the first quarter. When Amy Williams talked about making things difficult for Caitlin Clark, that was just too easy. Somebody has to step up and meet her earlier in the paint. White on a nice find in the wraparound pass. Okay, here comes a little full court pressure from the Huskers for the first time today as they're 
Feeling a little more energetic right now. The crowd's getting into it as well. Just to slow this offense down a little bit. Caitlin Clark, no red light on the shot clock. It's hers right now. Ten to shoot in the first quarter. This is why they bought the tickets. Off we go. Clark jams on the brakes. Fires and left it short. The final tip won't fall. And Nebraska is within three. Move the ball and move bodies. I think in our quest to try to find more paint touches ourselves, we've really been sticking the basketball and putting it above our head and staring inside. And we've just got to move the ball, move bodies. Amy, thanks. Thanks. They got it inside right there. It's batted out of bounds by Nebraska. A little bit better of a possession there in terms of moving the ball. Yeah, and like I said earlier, I think their offense is at its best when they are playing through Alexis Markowski in the post. I'd still like to see them feed it into her because she commands so much attention and frees things up on the perimeter. Iowa goes right to Stolke, knowing Markowski has two fouls. Couldn't really do anything about it. Yeah, Stolke is so strong, athletic, and explosive. They're going to have to just rethink that Alexis Markowski defending her if she's trying to protect the foul. There, off the curl, she fires and misses right. Stolke rips it back in bounds. Beautifully done. Lisa Bluter talked about the importance of rebounding for her team in this one. Sydney a falter. Just tough to the bucket. Eight for White. Pull up three. Would have been enormous for Nebraska. Always looking to run. Clark on the cross court five. It's a falter. What a pass from Caitlin Clark to see again that smallest opening to be able to feed that through cross court perfectly placed into the shooting pocket. Probably going to see some milestone today. She's two assists from a thousand for her career. Potts goes to the floor, and this could be five on four, but it's taken away by Shelley. And a big bucket for Nebraska. And there is certainly no reins on what she can choose to do as she dances down the lane and finds Stolke just thinning out the defense. And that's where you see her danger, right? She can get her own shot, and then she can get into the paint, force the defense to shift. And find Hannah Stolke. That's how Hannah Stolke got a ton of those 47 points last game. 17 of 20 from underneath the basket. Two for Petrie. She has four as Caitlin Clark is one assist shy of 1,000 for her career. Will it be here? She starts her engine and drives and tries to score. Tips it out. And Nebraska on the run. Shelly to crawl. Offense and rebound put back for Logan Nisley, the freshman, and once again a four-point game. Yeah, Nebraska has really started to get some second chance points now up to seven. Iowa has to locate and box out. Caitlin Clark drills the three out of nowhere sometimes. Yeah, she can just be so casual. Looking like she's just kind of surveying the offense and then pulls the trigger. Oh, the response from Nisley. Okay. Anything you can do. And a foul called on the drive. It's against Shelly. That's her second personal. So now that's Nebraska's probably two best players with two fouls. Markowski. And Shelly looks like Coach Williams is going to leave her out there right now. Caitlin Clark didn't want to come out of the ball game. I'm told she's even highly competitive in Scrabble. Were you talking to me, Coach? Definitely wasn't me. <laughs> Not talking to me. Fearbach threw it away, intercepted by Coley. Feeling very well at all. Only played a couple minutes in the last game. She played with the boys, though, because you couldn't find a girls' team for her. What attributes of her game do you still see? I would say just the competitiveness, the assertiveness. Um, she's very creative. You know, had to be at a young age. She was kind of a marked player even then, if you can imagine. So it's just a lot of fun. And I know you have a lot of people here supporting her. Tell me about playing in Nebraska for Caitlin. She seems to thrive against this team. And a lot of people here watching and cheering her up. 
for her. I think it's just everything she could ever imagine. She seems to be handling it all so well, and we look forward to a great performance the rest of the game here. Thank you, Brent. Thank you. Thank you. Here comes Brent's daughter, who just left it in the corner. That would have to be a hockey assist. It won't be. It's two for Stolke in Iowa. Back in the points column after a little bit of a drought. But yeah. thanks to Brent for spending the time with us. Yeah, really cool. And just Hannah Stolke there. We've seen her confidence grow. I saw her early in the season. She didn't go up strong like the way we're seeing her do in the last couple of weeks and games. You can see the pride of confidence growing in that press conference after the Penn State game. Caitlin Clark up for two. That is 12 for Clark so far today. Lisa Bluter, she said, look, the way you push Caitlin Clark's buttons is by saying she can't do something. around the baseline five to shoot for Nebraska and a foul call and just to wrap that take to the foul line and she misses the free throw Nebraska 73 percent second one is good move your feet be ready to help early instead of it being too late when she's already in the middle of the paint this is out of bounds and it's off of Iowa so that thousandth assist has been rather elusive so far. Jazz Shelley had it for three. Fantastic execution out of a somewhat timeout because of the officials' review, and that was a big one to open things up here for Nebraska. Kate Martin barreling down the lane. She's walled off, so Caitlin Clark triggers. And the pulls out. And you cannot get too deeply into the paint and forget about where Caitlin Clark is on the perimeter. 15 for Clark. Jess Shelley has a comment on that. Oh, now we're really revving the engine here. Shelley versus Clark. Double team. Okay. Who cares? <laughs> Shelly and Clark just cleared out. Let them go one on one for a few possessions. I mean, why not? Into the post. That's two for Natalie Potts. Wow, Nebraska is playing really confidently right now. I think they picked up their pace. Their rhythm looks better offensively. 17. That one from the state line. And she's going to hear about it from some folks. Here in Lincoln, just a colonel from the crowd of disdain. Not very often you see a Caitlin Clark air ball. That was a, the crowd was actually a bit calmer. I thought they would let her hear it a bit more. Well, maybe a bit more volatile. I was going to say, she <laughs> may hear it later as that one pinballs around to the sideline and saved nicely by Stolke. it down low and that's number 1,000 in the assist column and an absolute rocket off her hand. Only one of six NCAA women's players to hit 1,000 career assists. Caitlin Clark now on that list. This crowd together can't decide what it wants. And a foul call against a falter. And Caitlin Clark, we asked Lisa, are you as competitive as 22? She said, no way. And then Jan Jensen in the background, her assistant yelled, they're cut from the same cloth. <laughs> so no chance for a final possession for Iowa if Nebraska now plays its cards right after the foul. And we get a travel, so they will get a final touch here. Well, and coming back in. How about that? <laughs> but I wouldn't be surprised if she gives it up real quick here if she if she gets a dime. They deny she gets it anyway, right down the middle. As you said, to the falter, it's a miss. Exactly right. You've watched a lot of this. Really impressive to see Nebraska. I'm interested to see how they get Alexis Markowski more involved. She had two fouls for much of that first half. And just four points in that first half. That three a little short for Gabby Marshall on the opening possession for Iowa. Here comes Haight and Nebraska. There is Markowski playing well above the three-point line. Moriarty, hard drive. She draws contact and scores. 
Allison Williams chatted with Nebraska's head coach, Amy Williams, at the break. What do you have to say, Allison? Well, Jason, Coach Williams told us how important throughout this game transition defense is. She said at times it's been good, but at times it's lapsed. So in the second half, we may have to make sure we're completely locked in on our defensive transition and finishing defensive possessions. Also, as Allison reported, Iowa has really been crashing the offensive glass tonight as well. This afternoon. Clark, put it away. Three and the foul! Just absolutely nasty from Caitlin Clark. Clark's greatness on full display here. She loves that step back to the left side. We couldn't quite see just how much contact there was there. But a four-point play as she crawls closer to that 39 mark, Jason. Under 20 now. A steal for Marshall, taken back by Shelly. Jazz Shelly has been huge. The third year here in Nebraska after two at Oregon. Stolke on the kick out. It's an open look for three for Kate Martin. Gorgeous read and decision from Hannah Stolke, who was kind of lost along the baseline, double teams, and finds a wide open Kate Martin. Steals the double bomb and Clark to steal behind the back. Caitlin Clark bounce feet ahead. Marshall got sideswiped and scores. He said it's a real challenge. He said he was absolutely exhausted after practice yesterday. I said, what'd you do? He goes, I was dead. I was cramping up. I went home, laid down, and chugged pickle juice. Yeah, he, ch he jammed on pickle juice the other day to make sure he was ready for practice the rest of the week. And somebody needs to get him an NIL deal for, like, pickles or something like that. Down low, the miss for Markowski. Second chance, contact, and a bucket. A little bit of a relief, it looked like, as well. That's a great pickup by you. Like, finally, yes. I get one to go. I think she prefers the offensive side a little bit more. But defense is coming. You don't say. <laughs> two and a foul for Caitlin Clark. Markowski maybe still thinking about that foul a little bit. Doesn't fully engage with her. And, ooh, another foul called off the ball on Hannah Stokey. Her third personal. That was three on Markowski, so both post players are dealing with foul trouble now. Let's take a look. I mean, that's a that's tough because Hannah clear, Hannah does run into her, but she didn't she didn't know she was there. Like she wasn't even looking that way. Missed it. Top shot fan got by Clark and missed it. Tipped out to Caitlin Clark. Her way down the lane. Just dancing on the dribble. She waved off the screen and then Cole picks up the foul. So that's the fifth foul against Nebraska. So Caitlin Clark. Fill it up quickly. Just turn that switch up. We hear the energy in the arena picking up. Even if it's against her, you're almost just waiting for her to personally respond to that. How competitive is she? <laughs> Extreme levels. I mean, you see how she kind of gets into it with the officials sometimes. She feeds off of the crowd. I think she's in a top tier of that competitiveness. Markowski. Scores. Tough turnaround. Alexis Markowski doubling into, dribbling into the defense and then turning around to get the space. And there's the pick your poison, right? This is her fourth year of college basketball as she inches closer to Miss Kelsey Plum. Adding to her bump total as well. And then the step through while we're at it. Caitlin Clark has been on it on the defensive end. She has four steals. That's her second block of the game. She's playing both ends. That's a three for Nisley. Three times North Dakota Gatorade Player of the Year. Shelly to the wing, Kroll missed it for three, and the rebound for Nisley, who spots up again, and that one just short. That's going to be a foul against Coley and Nebraska. Allison made a great point yesterday, just watching the games, that sometimes it does seem that opposing players 
will take wilder shots because of the Caitlin Clark effect. And Lisa Bleeder, when Allison asked, didn't exactly confirm or deny it, but she definitely didn't deny that. Allison, what do you think? Yeah, I, I, I was intrigued by it because you watch these games play against Iowa and they just take some uncharacteristic shots. And so I asked Bluter about it and she laughed and she's like, yeah, that's the take and make. But she said that you do see it. It's a little bit of this, well, she can do it, I can do it mentality that can get in players' heads. A great point watching film, Allison, as you, you see it. As there's Martin taking a three on the kick down low. And that's two. There is Jazz Shelley, who so far has 13 points on 5 of 10 shooting. Marshall was right there with her. Markowski. Got it for three. You said it. Find her. They have it. A big second half for Alexis Markowski, the Lincoln native. Well, I didn't expect them to find her on the perimeter. That is back-to-back -back threes for the center, setting the screen. Both players go with the ball handler, pop out and knock down. Coley trying so hard to deny Caitlin Clark, and she won't be denied. Coach Amy Williams is furious right now, telling the officials to call the push off. She is livid on the sideline. That was a wrestling match to get the ball. It's rejected. Stolke involved once again. To the corner, and White misses strong. Clark out of the fray. Turned the defense into traffic cones for a minute. In her way, looking for teammates on the kick. She found Martin, and that is the danger. You crash on Clark, and Martin fills it up. White pull up. That's good. Nice read from Darian White off of the ball screen. Defense sunk low. She pulls up. This is not a score where you can maneuver the points that you want as Caitlin Clark is fouled by Shelly and two free throws coming for Clark. And again, you said it perfectly as Lisa Bruder told us. Kim, winning's first and only. We got a technical foul against Nebraska. Amy Williams, who is very Midwest nice from Spearfish, South Dakota, is not thrilled right now. Amy Williams just not happy with some of these touch fouls here. You, you could argue there that Clark kind of initiated with the elbow. The two players got tied up, but she is... Livid, she is over these reach-in fouls that are being called on Caitlin Clark. His first free throw is good. Single digits to get the all-time scoring record. Another is there. And with the technical, it's Iowa's choice. No good. I was going to say a pretty good option. They're, they're choosing. You would imagine so at 86%. Wow. Okay. So, the sound effects tell the story here in Lincoln. I was just going to comment on that. It has gotten loud in this building. The big blow-up mascot man, a little red on the hat. I think he uh, played in that distraction there. Even the inflatables are highly engaged today. Martin, hard dive and two. How good is Kate Martin at moving without the ball and cutting right to the rim? You hear coaches say cut to score. Kate Martin does that to a tee. It's the eighth assist for her roommate, Caitlin Clark. 14-point game on the kick. That's in the corner for Hake. It won't go. Clark, no shot clock, just Darian White in her periscope. Seven to go. Double comes. Martin down low. Stokey taken away downstairs, and we have a travel against Nebraska. 
Inbound to Stolke. She got it up. No whistle. I would say there is like a silent current in this arena right now, knowing that this is very much so within reach for Caitlin Clark. Eight points for the record. Step through Moriarty. As Nebraska stays close. That raises the chances that the Colts here will see history. Oh yeah, Nebraska is not going to go away in this game in front of their sold-out crowd. A talented team. Caitlin Clark just pops into that dribble and she finds Stolke again. They come from three, four states away for birthday presents and holiday presents and everything. Christmas presents. Is that turnaround is good for Natalie Potts and Nebraska? Is going to make a game of this. They went to the opposite side of Caitlin Clark there. That is a miss for Martin and Iowa. Miss Lee certainly shoots it well. The freshman guard from North Dakota, very decorated high school player, as you mentioned earlier. Nice pass by Markowski. And another three that just won't go down for Nebraska and Jazz Shelley when we're going to travel. Another good look that does not drop. But Natalie Potts, candidate for Big Ten freshman of the year, keeping that play alive. And this one, too. And the foul. She is certainly a front runner for the Big Ten freshman of the year. Great size, great rebounding. This is way too tight of a game to be thinking. Let's take out Caitlin to do it at home. This is a. This is a winning situation where they want to stay at, at the top of those Big Ten standings. Markowski, double came. She steps through it and just left it short. Caitlin Clark in a hurry. On the wraparound. Man, that was on Stolke's hands fast. And the rebound to Nebraska out of bounds. That's time on Thursday. 111 points for the Iowa Hawkeyes in their 22nd win of the year. The fans getting loud. Shelly ball fake and pass to the corner. Nothing there because of the defense by a falter. And Nebraska's bench. From our vantage point, let's take a look at the replay here. That's, I, I don't think that's a foul. I don't think Sidney a falter had anything to do with the Nebraska player coming out of bounds. What happened? 55,000 plus Nebraska obviously with that volleyball game back in 2023 which was such a spectacle that the players have talked about and Amy Williams has talked about and Iowa has missed six straight shots it's an eight point game yeah Lisa Bluter talked to Allison about shot selection that was a little bit of a wild one there nice Moriarty from Markowski at six Martin, big shot, Kate Martin. Interesting, no reaction there from Lisa Bluter. Like maybe that was a little bit early in the shot clock, but they did knock that one down finally for Iowa. Nathan Clark at 12 point third quarter. She has not scored here in the fourth. That for Jazz Shelley was necessary. Immense. I would keep putting those two in a ball screen. Jazz Shelley, Alexis Markowski, they can really find some good looks when you put those two in action together. Nathan Clark is trying to free up Kate Martin. It was not there. Clark has not seen the ball. They're playing away from her. It's Nebraska ball. Nebraska actually went to a triangle and two defense there. Gold Big Red surrounds the visiting Hawkeyes. It's a foul on Martin on the pop drop. Well, she had a little bit of success in high school. Her school won their final 100 games she played in. <laughs> That's insane. I mean, Incarnate Word Academy, St. Louis. Potts is good. Nebraska has never led, but we're closing in on that. Iowa had a 14-point lead and has shrunk to four. Ooh, an in 
entanglement and a foul on Markowski. That's her fourth personal. Caitlin Clark lets it fly. That's no good. And the rebound for Nisley in Nebraska. Caitlin Clark 0 for 3 in the fourth quarter. Markowski just missed it strong. Caitlin Clark ahead of the field. As she has been for the majority of her career. Martin cross court from Clark. And she's feeling good. She's been in this program for so long. She's seen it through 2019 to this year. Nisley can't get free. She's going to try anyway. Oh my goodness. Logan Nisley, 13 points. Something about these freshmen, zero hesitation. Taken away. Iowa wants a foul, won't get it. Suddenly, the walls are coming very close to the Iowa Hawkeyes right now in a four point game. Yeah, we've seen Iowa in these positions before that Ohio State upset. They were up big late. Half of them got away. This is going to be Nebraska basketball. And here it is. How about that? Special afternoon here in Lincoln and Nebraska trying to make it even more of a gift for their fans. Clark is called for a foul on a three-point opportunity. Clark shaking her head. Let's let's revisit this. Clear, I mean, clear as day. Caitlin gets her on the arm. If you love her making the case, but just not a smart play there from the nation's leading scorer. Caitlin Clark very clearly got Logan Nisley right across the arm in the shooting motion. Very fitting that no, uh, Logan Nisley would be at the line right now. She was the volleyball player of the year in the state of North Dakota in 21 and 22. She makes two of the three. It's a two-point game. Caitlin Clark has not scored in the fourth quarter. Martin rips it to Marshall. That's no good. Rebound taken by Markowski. And Nebraska can lead for the first time with a three. Suddenly game pressure on Iowa. And the Hawkeyes invite pressure. They say it's a privilege. They've got what they want right now. Cox too strong. Well defended by Kate Martin, staying vertical. Discipline without a foul. Clark wants the ball. She wants to score. She misses. Rebound for Cox. Shelly has hunted shots today. That's deflected and taken by Stokey, who's fouled. Caitlin Clark on the ball. It's Martin. Front iron. And another quick shot. Quick shot with the lead with probably about 20 seconds on the shot clock. The record that matters right now is in the bottom left with the possibility to advance it into the front court off the timeout. But here we go. Miss Lee, the freshman, to Jazz Shelley. Into the post it goes Markowski. Shelley. A fight for the ball. Shelly! That's good! The first lead for Nebraska! Gives Nebraska a one-point advantage, and here's Caitlin Clark. And it looks like they may look... A shot from forever is no good, and the rebound for Nebraska! <laughs> to start this nine-game run. Up in back. Shelly's got it. Jeff Shelly swatted at and fouled. Marshall didn't think she made contact. It was right in front of us. Uh, yeah, that was interesting because Iowa was clearly giving it a chance to get a steal out of the trap, and I didn't think there was any contact yet. It literally right in front of us. I, I don't think they fouled yet. They weren't trying to foul yet. I don't think they fouled, yet a foul was called. You're all over it. That was an anticipation call. Shelly to the free throw line. And, and they had her trapped in a really good spot to try to get a steal out of it. You mentioned it, Chad Shelley. Some of these players who've been through it at Nebraska finally 
seeing this through. Let a couple ticks off. They just cannot foul in the shooting motion. Especially on a blue signal. Get this thing in, and they do. Stalking late cuts in for two. And the Shelly's is foul. 4.99. Right. I think just a hard cut finds a gap. Shelly, big shot. Kate Martin on the inbound. Looks like they're trying to get something on the perimeter. A couple options are a no-go. Hannah of Stolke cutting right to the block. Nebraska has a foul to give. Very well, the defense. It's into Martin. Shelly is on Clark, trying to deny. And Clark is met and fouled by Potts. So there's the foul to give. 9.5 to go. Yep, it's a smart foul. They got plenty of time to tick off. There was no question that Caitlin Clark was not going into a shooting motion. But now the next foul would be free throws, would be the bonus. Inbound, tough catch for Martin. Caitlin Clark with five for the tie. It's no good. Rebound down mid lane. Out to Martin. No! And a record crowd watches a historic upset.